Each individual system stated within the following list can be classified either as an open or a closed system. Drag each item and, and assign each into the appropriate category of system, either open or closed. So there we have a list of systems. We have seven that are defined for us. And then we have two areas that are denoted where we will be categorizing these systems as either open or closed. So this is a type of problem. And it's referred to as an alternative item type or an AIT problem. It gives us, again, a list of seven diff different systems. We got our kitchen refrigerator, our ceiling fan, a thermometer, air compressor, a pressure cooker, a carburetor, and a radiator on a car. So to start things off, let's identify what exactly we are being asked to determine in this particular problem. Now this isn't something that's unique to AITs. I always teach our students to first identify and make certain they know exactly what is being asked for because a lot of the times in these longer problem statements, some of the information will get jumbled. So I always like to highlight in my workshops and my cram sessions what we're actually being asked. It's a basic fundamental, but believe me, under timed conditions, it's something that can be so simple, so simple yet so catastrophic on a problem that you know and should be getting correctly. So this problem asks us to take the list of systems presented and assign them into the appropriate category, either as an open or a closed system. So we do this by clicking on any of these systems here, any of these words and dragging them into the designated areas that have been outlined for us. Now it's obvious, but this problem is designed to mimic what you could expect to see as a typical drag and drop problem, requiring, requiring you to click and drag each individual system into its appropriate category, either as an open or closed system. Now before we get into any problem, and this may come second nature to you, but uh, we definitely don't, uh, we don't uh, bypass it. We have to definitely understand the fundamental concepts that revolve behind each and every single problem that we work. So we're gonna outline that for a year. We have to actually recognize what the elements are that differentiate an open and closed thermodynamic system. And we also have to understand first and foremost that this is a thermodynamics problem, which is going to help us find our place within our NCES reference handbook. Now, when we are analyzing thermodynamic processes, we are often asked to assess what is going on with the transfer of mass and energy across the boundaries of a particular system. On this basis of analysis, we are able to classify the system as one of three types. We have either have an open, a closed, or an isolated system. In this problem, we are given a list of systems and we are asked to classify them in, into the appropriate category, but only two of the three categories that they can be, and that's open and closed. So we're not really concerned right now with isolated systems. So again, the first thing we must do is get a grasp fundamentally on the characteristics of an open and a closed system and what exactly differentiates the two. Now we can get a general definition of these two systems by flipping back to page 89 of the NCES reference handbook. Honing in here on the left column and more specifically in two, these two little areas that are giving us a general definition of a closed and an open thermodynamic system. Now back to our slide highlighting the characteristics of open and closed systems, let's highlight some key points that we must remember, both for this conceptual AIT problem that we're working, but also for the quantitative problems we will encounter in the thermodynamics section of the exam. Now an open system is one in which can exchange both mass and energy. 
as heat or work with its surroundings. The mass within the system may or may not be constant, and the processes occurring in such a system take on flow type nature. Water pumps, engines, boilers, turbines, and heat exchangers are all examples of open systems. Most of the engineering machines and equipments that we will typically work with in the real world are actually open systems as well. Now a closed system, on the other hand, is one in which can exchange energy with its surrounding, but it does not exchange mass. The quantity of matter within the system remains fixed, and the system is described as a control mass system. But don't let these parameters pigeonhole you. Just because we have a closed control mass system does not mean that the physical nature and chemical composition of the mass that's within the system is not changing. Most all thermodynamic problems that we work includes the assessment of how matter changes between a series of states. For example, water may evaporate into a steam or steam may condense into a water. This is an important point to note. A chemical reaction may occur between two or more components of the closed system while the mass of the system remains the same. Now, examples of a closed system are things like batteries, water in a tank, and a piston cylinder assembly. So what differentiates an open and a closed system? Simple, mass flow across the boundaries. The boundary of an open system allows the transfer of both matter as well as energy. The boundary of a closed system allows the transfer of energy as heat and work, but not of matter between it and its surroundings. Now, rallying back to our list of systems within this particular problem, we will have to determine where each of these systems falls based on the characteristics that we just defined. We know what differentiates now an open versus a closed system. So let's go ahead and dive into an explanation of each system one by one, starting with a kitchen refrigerator. So here's a schematic of your typical refrigeration system. Here's our system boundary, a coolant with a boiling temperature below the freezing point of water is sent through the cycle counterclockwise in the diagram that you're seeing. The coolant extracts heat from the refrigerator at the evaporator, causing coolant to vaporize. It is then compressed and sent through the condenser where it exhausts heat to the outside. So a kitchen refrigerator allows transfer of energy as electricity supplied to the compressor and heat loss to the atmosphere as the working fluid travels through the condenser. But there is no mass flow into or out of the system boundaries, or in other terms, no matter is lost between it and its surroundings. And for this reason, we would take that system and drag it into our closed system area. All right, let's talk about a ceiling fan. There's a schematic, there's our system boundary. Now a ceiling fan converts electricity supplied to the fan motor to work to rotate the blades. As the blades rotate, air flows into and back out to the surroundings. So with this, there is both transfer of mass as well as energy, which makes a ceiling fan an open system. 
So what about a thermometer? Here's a basic schematic. There's our system boundary. A thermometer is supplied heat from its surroundings to the thermometer bulb, but no mass is actually transferred. Therefore, we would drag thermometer into our closed system area. Now, what about an air compressor? There's our system boundaries. An air compressor converts electricity supplied to drive the compressor motor, which takes in air at a low pressure and exerts it back into the environment at a higher pressure. With a transfer of both matter and energy, a compressor is an open system. What about a pressure cooker? Well, there's our pr pressure cooker right there. There's our system boundaries. And neglecting any nominal amount of steam leakage that we may have, a pressure cooker is a closed system. It supplies heat, but it does not exchange any mass with the environment outside of its system boundaries. So that's a closed system. Now what about a carburetor? There's a typical car carburetor right there. There's our system boundaries. A carburetor is going to take in gas, it's going to take in air, and it's going to exert it at a, as an air-gas mixture. Therefore, it is considered an open system. Now finally, we have a radiator on a car. There's our typical cooling system in your vehicle. There's a number of different components within that cooling system of which we're only concerned with the radiator. So there's our system boundary. We know that coolant, hot coolant is going to be, or hot water is going to be cycled from the inlet through the radiator tubes, dispersing the coolant at the outlet of the radiator at a cooler temperature. So heat energy is extracted by air flowing over the outer surface of the radiator tubes. And with this, there is transfer of both matter and of energy, making it an open system. So that's all to recap our systems. We have a kitchen refrigerator is a closed system. A ceiling fan is an open system. A thermometer is a closed system. An air compressor is an open system. A pressure cooker is a closed system. A carburetor is an open system. And a radiator on a car is an open system. The number one thing differentiating all of these systems is mass flow across the system boundaries. You remember that point come exam day, and this problem's literally going to take you seconds. But tonight I wanted to dive into the details. I wanted to dive into the trenches. I wanted to get in to exactly what an open and uh, closed system are because it's something that is, is definitely overlooked and could be intimidating, but it's not.